and what is going on today guys, Tomcat here, and welcome to Assetto Corsa on the Xbox One. Now, I'm super excited to be here playing the console version of Assetto Corsa. The PC version has been out for a little while now, and it's a super fun game, very, very deep simulation, and there's so many things you can do with it. I picked it up with a controller first off, tried it a little bit later with a wheel, and then went back to a controller. Um, the game is definitely focused on, uh, it, 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 it's focused on the wheel, but at the same time, anybody can pick it up with a controller and play it. Just you gotta make sure, you just gotta make sure that you got your settings right and you're good to go. Now, the first thing I wanted to show you guys is the menu system. It's very, um, very crisp, clean, nothing going on that, that doesn't really have to, honestly. Like, the menu is very simple, shows you everything that you need and really nothing that you don't need here in the menu, uh, for you to select. Now, what I will say is that I do like how it kind of rotates between different uh, different looks as far as the background goes, and the backgrounds are super crisp, right? The backgrounds are super, super crisp. I really like that. I really like how they put attention to that, and visually, the game is just really, really nice to look at. Now, the game actually went live August 30th, so if you guys want to uh, get a, get some time on it on your Xbox One or PS4 or either console that you, uh, you want to play the game on, Feel free to go for it because the game is the game is very much very very much out and very much available. Now, since this was my first time with the console version of Assetto Corsa, I wanted to look through the cars, look at look through and see what was there, kind of just see what was up, you know, gonna be up right off the bat, because there's actually over 90 cars in the game. 90 specifically rendered insanely detailed cars. So you've got like quite the variety to choose from, especially when it comes down to uh like so many different race cars and just pure driver's cars and supercars, really. Like, just so many things across the board. Um, so I was originally thinking LaFerrari, and then I was like, that's probably not a good idea. Um, <laughs> seeing as I've just started it up. So I kind of found the happy medium of the Lotus 211. The 211 is one of my favorite track day cars. I love the 211. It's a very cool, stripped out driver's car. If you want a driver's car that's a little bit more driver's car-ish than a Lotus Elise or a Lotus Exige, then the 211 is such a great prospect for that. The 211 really just show, really just gives you everything you need and nothing that you don't. It's kind of like the Assetto Corsa menu system. So it's actually kind of an interesting contrast. But when you get it out on the track, it is a, uh, it's quite a blast to drive. Now, before I go any further, I just want to let you guys know that the guys over at Assetto Corsa are doing this pretty legit giveaway. They're actually, uh, five winners are going to be getting a season pass, which is going to give you the, um, the Porsche packs one, two, and three, the Japanese pack, the red pack, and exclusive car livery uh, for either PS4 or Xbox One. Now, there's links in the description box below uh, to where you guys can uh, to, to where you guys can actually get in, get into these contests or like or well the contest. But the also also let me know let me know in the comment section below which car uh, from Assetto Corsa you guys are most excited to drive because there's a lot of cars in this game and the, the thing is there's there's a lot of cars that are very very much tailored to driving like just specific drivers cars that's what i really like about this game it's all about the driving it's all about the drivers cars and it, when when you're getting into this game you know that you're getting a like a game that's made for drivers really now the also just so you guys know, the giveaway is also over in one week. So there's also, there's, there will be links in the description box below. One if you're a PS4 guy, and one if you're an Xbox One guy. So just so you guys know, if you get, um, if you get in the description box below, click those links, you will, uh, you will be in the running for that season pass. And just so I can be completely upfront with you guys, I want to give a big thank you to everybody at 505 Games for sponsoring this video. Now, anyway, moving on from all of that, and also just so you guys know, just the fact that the video is sponsored does not change my opinion on the fact that this game is genuinely a, a good game. It's a fun game. It's a, a really enjoyable, very realistic racing simulator. That's what it is, and that's what it's for. And for what it, for what it's made for, it does an awesome job. Now, we're still kind of bombing around the circuit in this Lotus 211, and what I'm trying to show you guys here is, number one, I actually like this view a little bit better than the view where you actually see the driver's hands. I'm not sure why, it's just I was a little bit more comfortable in this view, it just kind of made a little bit more sense to me, even when I was using the controller. Now, later on, there there uh, there will be a little bit of lapping the Nürburgring in a Ford, f uh, bleh, Ford Escort, where you guys will see, oh god, we've gone off track, big time. The thing is, if you go off track, you're, you better be ready to catch it because you will be going around and ending up backwards if you don't. 
Now, speaking of going around and ending up backwards, that's something you really don't want to do with the track we're on now. We're on the Nür Nürburgring Nordschleife. This was actually my first attempt with the wheel, and I need to recalibrate my wheel. I need to set up a better, a um, little bit of a better dead zone, a little bit of a better, um, better kind of calibration for my force feedback. But, but, it is, even in the base setting on my wheel, it, it's still super fun. I think the game is definitely, like, you feel the, the development that went into uh, the wheel. Because the feedback is crazy. Like, you feel like you're on that track. It's like, it, it pulls at you. The wheel, like, will tug and shake. And it's, it's intense. It really is intense. But it really gets you into the experience. And it gets you into that car in the game. And you're like, holy crap. I'm, I'm like, I feel like I'm here at, like, the Nürburgring. That's freaking intense, right? I mean, so I I really did enjoy that, and I really also enjoy the car that I'm driving right now. This uh, this Escort RS uh, RS1800, I believe. And I cut the grass there a little bit. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't don't uh, don't <laughs> don't get after me for it. But um, I love the fact that you can you know you can get out on the ring, and if you want to be you know if you want to have a little bit more of a casual experience, you can play it on a controller. You can set it to um, you can set everything to, you know, like with traction control, stability control. I had everything off. Um, I actually went into the wall slightly. Um, but then again, I had everything off. So I'm just, I'm getting used to the game. I had everything turned off. And it was just something that's like, well, if you go into it with everything off, you will have some spins. But you know what? I mean, it's, it's something to get used to. And it's actually a really fun game to get used to because of the fact that it has... That uh, it has that that learning curve. If you do turn everything off and try to play try to play the game in what is basically hard mode, but but if you don't want to quite play it in hard mode, you can get used to it based on uh, based on your skill level and just kind of turn the assists off as you go. You can actually turn the stability control down in stages, which is really really cool um, compared to the fact that you can turn you know say traction control is kind of an on and off. It's kind of like an on and off switch. But the stability control, you actually have different levels that you can adjust, which is really, really intuitive, really, really cool, and I like that. You can also have it set to where if you want the transmission of, like, if you want the transmission in the game to basically act like whatever car you're driving at that present time, then you can set it to do that. Like, if you're driving a Ferrari 488 GTB, then you can have it set to where it's a, a paddle shift with gas and brake and automated, uh, automated downshift blips and um, just things like that. Whereas, if you're driving, say, this RS-1800, you're full manual. So, I really, really like how they've, they've set that up. And if you're driving, if you just so happen to be driving something that's an automatic, it will behave like an automatic. So, they've got a bunch of different little tweaks set up to, to make the game very, very interesting and really fun and immersive. And because of that difficulty level that you feel, you're, when you turn everything off, because of that difficulty level that you feel, you're like, you get this huge sense of achievement when you... Uh, when you pull off, like, when you pull off a slide, or when you come out of a corner on the perfect line, you hit that apex, you're like, wow, that felt really, really, really good. And it, the thing is, it feels that good because it, it does, like, it, it does feel good to come out of a corner right on that perfect line to, you know, to recover a slide, you know, to, to just do these things that you're like, wow, that really did feel good. I, that felt really, like, I, I, I accomplished that, right? I accomplished that. I had a part in that. And you really feel... You, 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 you're proud of yourself, you're proud of the car, and you're like, you're like, that was really fun, that was really, that was really cool. Now switching gears again out of the race at the Nürburgring, I wanted to show you guys what's really cool about these special events. Now this Lotus Type 49 at Zandvoort, that's one of those special events, and the thing is, there, everything has a, everything has, like, a setup to it. Everything is, is set up as a, either a challenge, or it's got this little, like, almost mini, like, not really mini storyline, but, like, you, you understand why you're here. You understand why you're here driving the car. And, my God, when you get behind the wheel of one of these classic open-wheel racers, whoa, you guys, you gotta hold on. You gotta hold on, and you better be ready, because these things are crazy. These things are quick, and they are, um, if, with everything off, they are quick, they are unforgiving, and you had better be ready. You, I'm just saying, you had better be ready because if you're not, then I'll, well, you'll see what happens right now. Uh, you'll go off track, and actually, that's a good description of how the dirt will get on your tires, and actually you get this kind of like little tire discoloration, which is really cool. It kind of like added, it's, it's all these little details, right? It's all these little details that make the game that much cooler. And, and the fact that open wheel racing, and especially classic open wheel racing, is just cool. Like, the fact that they've got that is just awesome.
And another thing I really did want to mention on the list of things I'm talking about with the game is that the frame rate, really crisp, really smooth, and it does help as far as as far as timing your corrections and timing your uh, correctional oversteer or catching understeer. Um, definitely, definitely when you get into it, when you get into a rhythm, the frame rate plays into that quite a bit because the frame rate, if you're if you're lagging behind a little bit in frame rate, then you're not really going to be able to catch things as quickly as you as as, as as you might want. But here on the Xbox One, it actually runs really, really, really well, super crisp, and I actually never had any issues uh, as far as frames go um, throughout my time with the game, which actually is especially helpful when you're driving, coincidentally, open wheel cars, because to be honest, we're all gonna get distracted by watching those two front wheels move and watching the suspension work, which it all does, it all moves, and you can see everything going on and you can see everything working. Um, but it actually, it, it helps because it makes those transitions look very lifelike and very realistic. And, but speaking of that kind of thing, we're actually going to transition into something else in just a second, which was our first attempt at the drift mode, which didn't go all that well. I mean, it went well, it went with a lot of spin outs, but it went well nonetheless. Now, before we got into drift mode, I actually went into the options and adjusted my steering speed just a little bit. I turned it up a little bit because I wanted to make sure that I'd be able to catch the car using the controller uh, pretty quickly. Um, the thing with drift mode that you have to be uh, prepared for is that you will have to play with the uh, you, you you will have to play with the settings and you will have to figure out what works for you, um, at least in my experience. But when you do find what works for you, um, then it'll actually then it's really fun. It, it's it, it feels good. It feels it feels uh, pretty smooth actually. Once it gets, once you get the, um, once you get the controls set to where you set to where you really like them. Now, I may do a tutorial in the future if you guys want me to on actually setting everything up for drift mode, so you guys can get that little bit of an advantage, a little bit of an edge. But if you're, if you want to just jump into it, it's 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 not that bad to jump into. It's just something that you will have to practice at so you don't spin out or well or lose your speed but definitely focus on when you're when you're going into the drift mode and actually kind of figuring it out focus on doing little tiny slides first and then work your way up to bigger drifts because if you try to do big drifts right out the gate you're gonna probably spin and uh and and not be very happy about it but the very first thing like i said that you'll want to focus on is just practicing and making sure you get the little slides down first um, and I'm sure I'll get I'll, I'll get better with it as I go, but it's definitely something I want to focus on. But overall, I definitely think I'll be putting in a lot of time on the console version of Assetto Corsa. It's a lot of fun to play, and it's definitely something that once you get your settings uh, dialed in the way you like them, it's really it, it feels great on both the controller and the wheel. So I would definitely say to check it out. Make sure you also check out the contest link in the description box below so you guys can get your hands on that season pass or be part of one of the five people to get your hands on that season pass. Remember, there's separate links for Xbox One and PS4 down there. And I just, again, want to thank you guys for watching. And uh, I will definitely be playing some more of this game in the future as we go on. So hope you guys did enjoy. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button. Tell me in the comment section down below what you guys thought of it. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe for more. And I will see you guys in the next one. Talk to you guys later. Hope you guys enjoyed.